Welcome back. In this video, we're going to have a look at rows and columns. So this is the row widget and the column widget in Flutter. So I've created a new project folder called Flutter underscore rows underscore columns. And this is the project folder in which I will test out rows and columns. So in the main dot dot, I have run app, material app. I've got the scaffold. In the body of the scaffold, I've got the center widget. And then I've got a text widget that says hello. Now, instead of saying hello there, let's start off with a simple container. And this container will have a color. And let's set the color as colors.blue. I'm going to give this one a height of 300. And I'm going to give it a width of 300. So these, uh, this width and height is just to actually help us to have some area in where we can actually place the row or the column. Now, as a child of this container, so I'm going to go to child. And the child of the container, let's start off with a column. Now, this column widget, if you hover over it, you will see that it accepts a key. There's a main axis alignment. There's a main axis size. There's a cross axis alignment. There's a text direction. There's a vertical direction. And there's a text baseline. And then very important, there's children. And these children are actually widgets. Or a list of widgets so let's start off with the children in this column so i'm going to start with children and it automatically opens up the two block brackets and inside of it i can start creating children so for the children i'm going to have different containers with different colors so we can see them in a column so let's start off the first one with the color of colors dot red let's save and let's set the height as 40 and let's set the width as 100. Now I'm going to copy this container and I'm going to add it inside of this list of children widgets. So let's just keep it at three of them. But let's make this color now purple and let's make this one orange. Now let's run this quickly and see what happens. Right, so there we can see there's the three items I added as part of this column. Now there's a few settings that we can set here and I'm going to start off with the main axis alignment. So the main axis for a column, remember a column is from top to bottom, so the main axis is the vertical axis or the Y axis. So the alignment for the vertical axis or the main axis then will be main axis alignment and if you put the dot there you will see there's center, there's end, there's space around, space between, space evenly and start. So if I go to, for example, center there and run this again, vertically, my children will be in the center. And you can see they moved now to the center. Now we can also look at, for example, start and run it again. Start just means it's at the top and end will be at the bottom. So if we say start, we will see that was the default one where it actually is at the top. We can also say end there, and using end will push them to the bottom. Now let's look at this at some of the other options. So we've got center, we've got end, and we've got start. Let's look at space around. So if we choose space around, it will take the available main axis space and have the equal space amount ev around every single one of the items in this column. So you can see the space there will also have a space at the bottom. This one will also have a space at the top and a space at the bottom, a space at the top and a space at the bottom. And the spaces will be equal. And when I say the spaces are equal, it's this space there will also be there up until halfway through. And then this one will also have one at the top and one at the bottom. This one will have one at the top and one at the bottom. Okay, so that's space around. Now let's look at space between, and you can see basically it will take the first component, put it right at the top, take the last component, put it right at the bottom, and then make equal spaces between. Right, let's go to the next one. Space evenly, and this will give you now equal space at the top between all of these. The spaces there, 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 and there will be the same size. Right, so let's look at this one again at the start. And let's look at one of the other options we can also do. So we can go to the main axis size. And there's two main axis size dot either max or min. So let's use the min size there. And if you hover over the min, you can see it's the minimum 
Minimize the amount of free space along the main axis subject to the incoming layout constraints. So basically it tries to make the children as small as possible to fit into the container or whatever you've got the column inside. Now let's look at another property which we call, can call the cross axis alignment. Now if the main axis alignment is the vertical axis, then the cross axis alignment will be the other one, which is the horizontal axis or the X axis. Now for that one, we can also give it a property and we can say main, not main axis, cross axis alignment dot, let's say start and we run it again and you can see on the X axis or on the horizontal axis, it's moving now. And if we add end there, it will move it to the right hand side because that's the end of the cross axis. Let's look at some other options there. We can also say stretch there. And you can see then it fills the whole area. Right, so this is the cross axis alignment and let's just keep it at center for now. And then if we look at some of the other options, we also have text direction and vertical direction. So let's look at this one quickly. If we run it again, in this case, we will work with the vertical direction and I'm going to use vertical direction and you can see there's down or up. So if I choose down, you can look at the sequence out of these values. So it's normally going from the top to the bottom. So if we run this, you will see absolutely no change because that's the default. But if I say up here, it means I'm going to go from the bottom upwards, starting with red first, which means the red will be at the bottom and orange will be at the top. So let's run this one quickly. Right. And then because we changed the vertical direction, the start will now be at the bottom and not at the top. So I can change that to end and that will just move it back to the top again. Right. And that's basically it for a column. Now let's just change this column to a row. And by not changing anything else, let's run this and see what happens. So now you can see this change now into a row with three items. Uh, you can see the main axis alignment is the end. Now let's just quickly have a look at this. The width of this one is 100 and 100 and 100. So obviously it will fit in nicely there. So let's just make this width. Let's make these 80 and 80 and 80 and run again. Right, so you can see that the main axis alignment is, uh, is to the end and uh, the vertical direction doesn't really matter now. We're going to look at something else now. So for the main axis alignment, we can have it at start at end. We can also use the others, which is space between or stuff like that, but it works exactly the same. So space between, for example, you can still do the same thing. It's now just horizontally instead of vertically. Right, so let's just keep this one at center and run it again and then we should see the three right in the center. Now the cross axis alignment, because for a row the main axis is horizontal, so the cross axis will be vertical and that means that it, currently it's in the center, but we can have it at the start, which will move it to the top, or end, which will move it to the bottom. Now in order to have the sequence of the red, the purple and the orange changed, we can use, if you hover over it, you will see there's a text direction. So let's use text direction and we're going to say text direction dot. And you can see there's right to left or left to right. So right to left, if you run it again, you will see the colors will change. Okay, so you see the red that was there in the front is now moved to the back. So we have switched the sequence. We can also have left to right and that is the default and then it will go back to the default one. Right, so now let's just look at something else. The last thing I want to show you with the rows and columns, let's change this back to a column and we run it again. Let's have the cross axis alignment also to center so that everything is nicely centered. Right, so now let's try the following. We're going to have a container, a container and a container and inside of this column we will have a row. So you can also embed these to actually create very complicated layouts. So in this row, I will have children again. But let's say these children will now be text widgets and I'm going to have three of them. Let's say we start off the text with a US dollar there where we set the style as text style and we set the font size to let's say 15. Now let's save this 
and I want to copy this one now. So I'm going to take that text widget, I'm going to add another widget and another widget. So for this one, I'm going to remove the font size and the style, and we will just have a few dots there. For this one, we will actually show the dollar. So let's say uh, escape character there and say $3,000 there. And let's make this one double the size, a 30. Now let's run this and quickly see what we've got. Right, so now we've got a row inside of this column that looks like this. Now what we can do in order to create some space between the components, we can add a container there with a specified height or we can just use a sized box and that sized box will also help us just to get some height. So I'm going to set the height to let's say 20 and that will give me some space between the previous colors, these containers and this new row that we created. So now if you look at this you can see that they are not nicely aligned. This text there and the US dollar there seems nicely aligned but if we could have taken a line through them, you will see that it will actually go through that 3000. So in order to align them nicely, we can go into this row and we can set the text baseline as text baseline dot. And now you've got two options. You've got either alphabetic or ideographic. So I'm going to choose alphabetic there and I'm going to explain that now. And then we're going to have the cross axis alignment cross axis alignment dot baseline. So if we run this now, you will see now that they are actually nicely aligned to the bottom. Okay, so this is another cross axis alignment option that you can use and that's the baseline. So what is the dif difference now between alphabetic and ideographic? So you will see it doesn't matter which one you use here, it actually looks exactly the same. I can see absolutely no difference. But as I understand, the difference between the two is as follows. If you use alphabetic, now you can see, just look at the word cross alignment there. You can see all the characters in this cross axis alignment, that word is aligned. You see the bottom of the C, the R, the O, the S, S, everything is aligned. But the G is a bit to the bottom there because of that uh, curl of the G, it goes a bit lower down. So if I say I want to have them alphabetic as the baseline, then the baseline will be underneath the C-R-O-S-S. -S. It will be that baseline. But if I say ideographic, the baseline will be underneath the G or the last part of the G. And that's where your line or your baseline will be then. So that's the difference between ideographic and alphabetic. Although I cannot really see the difference there. Right, and I think that is then it for your row widget as well as your column widget. I hope that you've learned something from this video. See you in the next one.